Right now, as you're watching this video, there might be another you in another universe making a different choice. Maybe they clicked on a different video. Maybe they never opened YouTube at all. Maybe in their universe you became an astronaut or a chef or never existed at all. This isn't science fiction. It's a serious scientific theory that some of the world's most brilliant physicists spend their careers studying. The multiverse theory suggests our entire universe, with its hundreds of billions of galaxies, might be just one bubble in an infinite cosmic foam of other universes. Each one potentially has different laws of physics, different histories, and yes, possibly different versions of you. Today, we're diving into one of the most mind-bending, controversial and fascinating ideas in all of science. We'll explore why many physicists believe the multiverse must exist, why others think it's not even science, and what it would mean for everything we thought we knew about reality. Buckle up. We're about to journey beyond the edge of everything. The birth of an impossible idea. The multiverse wasn't born in a science fiction writer's imagination. It emerged from the equations of quantum mechanics, almost against physicists' will. Our story begins in 1957 with a Princeton graduate student named Hugh Everett III, who was trying to solve one of quantum mechanics' most troubling paradoxes. Here was the problem. Quantum mechanics says particles exist in multiple states simultaneously, a phenomenon called superposition. An electron can be in multiple places at once, spinning both up and down, existing in a blur of possibilities. But when we observe it, we only see one outcome. The mathematics said multiple realities, but our experience showed just one. Where did the other possibilities go? Everett proposed something radical. They don't go anywhere. Every possible outcome happens, each in its own parallel universe. When you measure that electron, the universe splits. In one universe, you see it spinning up. In another universe, another you sees it spinning down. Both universes are equally real, equally valid. The universe doesn't choose, it does everything. His advisor, John Wheeler, who had worked with Einstein, initially supported the idea but later distanced himself under pressure from the physics establishment. Niels Bohr, the godfather of quantum mechanics, dismissed it entirely. Everett was so discouraged that he left physics altogether, spending the rest of his career working on military operations research. He died in 1982, never knowing his many worlds interpretation would become one of the most discussed theories in modern physics. The Quantum Multiverse To understand Everett's multiverse, imagine you're flipping a coin. In our everyday experience, it lands either heads or tails. But in the quantum multiverse, both outcomes happen. The universe splits. In one branch, you see heads. In another, you see tails. Both versions of you are convinced they live in the real universe, unaware of the other. Now scale this up. Every quantum event, every particle interaction, trillions upon trillions happening every second, spawns new universes. Since you started watching this video, the universe has split an unimaginable number of times. There are already countless versions of you, each living in a slightly different reality, each believing they're the real you. This sounds absurd. But here's the disturbing part. The mathematics works perfectly. The many worlds interpretation requires no additional assumptions beyond what we already know about quantum mechanics. It's actually simpler than the alternatives. It just says the mathematics of quantum mechanics is literally true, not just a calculation tool. Consider the famous Schrodinger's cat thought experiment. A cat in a box with a quantum triggered poison is supposedly both alive and dead until observed. The standard interpretation says the cat exists in superposition until measurement collapses it into one state. But many worlds says both outcomes happen. In one universe, you open the box to find a living cat. In another, a dead one. The cat was never in superposition. There were always two cats in two universes. The implications are staggering. Every possible version of history has happened somewhere. There's a universe where dinosaurs never went extinct, where Rome never fell, where you made every different choice you've ever contemplated. The quantum multiverse isn't just big, it's exhaustively complete. Everything that can happen does happen. The cosmic inflation multiverse, but quantum mechanics isn't the only road to the multiverse. 
In 1980, physicist Alan Guth was trying to solve problems with the Big Bang Theory when he stumbled upon something extraordinary. Cosmic inflation, inflation. Theory suggests that in the first fraction of a second, after the Big Bang, we're talking about zero point whoa, whoa, nah, seconds. The universe expanded faster than the speed of light, doubling in size every trillion, trillion, trillionth of a second. This solved many cosmological puzzles, but it created a new one. Inflation might never completely stop. Picture boiling water. Most of the water is liquid, but bubbles of steam form randomly. According to eternal inflation, our universe is like one of those bubbles. Space itself is still inflating at an exponential rate, but in certain regions, inflation stops, creating bubble universes. Our entire observable universe is just one bubble in an eternally boiling cosmic pot. Here's where it gets wild. Each bubble universe could have different physical properties. When inflation stops in a region, the energy of the inflation field converts into matter and radiation. The big bang of that bubble universe. But the way this happens could vary, leading to different forces, different particles, different laws of physics entirely. In some bubble universes, gravity might be stronger, crushing any hope of star formation. In others, the electromagnetic force might be weaker, atoms couldn't form, and the universe would be a sea of unbound particles. Most would be sterile, lifeless, but in an infinite multiverse, even the most improbable configurations happen infinitely often. Stanford physicist Andre Linde, one of inflation's pioneers, calculated that new bubble universes are constantly forming. While you've been listening to this, countless new universes have been born each potentially with its own unique physics, its own future, its own story. The string theory landscape, the third path to the multiverse, comes from humanity's ambitious attempt to unify all of physics. String theory. Instead of particles being point-like dots, string theory proposes their tiny, vibrating strings, a billion billion times smaller than a proton. Different vibration patterns create different particles, an elegant idea that could explain everything from quarks to gravity. But string theory has a problem, or perhaps a feature. It requires extra dimensions beyond our familiar three of space and one of time. These extra dimensions are curled up so small we can't see them, like how a garden hose looks one-dimensional from far away but reveals its circular dimension up close. Here's the catch. There are about 10, 500 different ways these extra dimensions could be shaped. That's a one followed by 500 zeros. More possibilities than there are atoms in the observable universe. Each configuration creates a universe with different physical laws. This cosmic collection of possibilities is called the string theory landscape. Leonard Susskind, one of string theory's architects, argues this landscape isn't a bug, it's a feature. If the multiverse contains all these possible universes, it's no surprise we find ourselves in one suitable for life. It's like asking why Earth is the perfect distance from the sun for liquid water. Out of all the planets in the galaxy, we naturally find ourselves on one where we can exist. But this explanatory power comes at a cost. With 10, 500 possible universes, string theory can explain anything, which, critics argue, means it explains nothing. How do you test a theory that predicts everything is possible somewhere? This has led to fierce debates about whether string theory and its multiverse are science or philosophy dressed in mathematical clothing. Evidence and observations, can we detect other universes? It sounds impossible. By definition, other universes are beyond our observable horizon. But scientists have proposed several ingenious ways we might find evidence of the multiverse if our universe is a bubble in eternal inflation, it might occasionally collide with other bubbles. These cosmic fender benders would leave distinctive circular patterns in the cosmic microwave background, the afterglow of the Big Bang. In 2011, physicists Stephen Feeney and colleagues analyzed data from the Planck satellite, looking for these collision signatures. They found several candidate spots, but nothing conclusive. The search continues with ever more sensitive instruments. Another approach involves fine-tuning. Our universe seems suspiciously well calibrated for life. If the strong nuclear force were 2% stronger, protons couldn't form. 
If it were 5% weaker, stars couldn't shine. The cosmological constant, the energy of empty space, is 120 orders of magnitude smaller than quantum mechanics predicts. It's like throwing a dart at random and hitting not just the bullseye, but a specific atom within the bullseye. In a single universe, this fine-tuning seems to demand explanation. But in a multiverse, with varying physical constants, it's inevitable that some universes would have the right conditions for observers. We necessarily find ourselves in one of those rare, hospitable universes because we couldn't exist anywhere else. A reasoning called the Anthropic Principle. The multiverse might also explain quantum mechanics' weirdness. In 2014, physicists at Griffith University in Australia claimed to find evidence of parallel universes interacting with ours through quantum phenomena. They argued that what we call quantum uncertainty is actually the influence of nearby parallel worlds. It's a controversial claim, but it shows how the multiverse might leave subtle fingerprints on our reality. The opposition and criticism not everyone is buying tickets to the multiverse. Some of physics' most respected voices argue the whole idea is unscientific speculation that distracts from real physics. Paul Steinhardt, one of inflation theory's original architects, has become one of the multiverse's harshest critics. He argues that a theory that predicts everything predicts nothing. If any observation can be explained by saying, we just happen to live in that kind of universe, then the theory can't be falsified. And if it can't be falsified, according to philosopher Karl Popper's criterion, it's not science. Nobel laureate David Gross calls the multiverse a dangerous idea that undermines physics' goal of finding unique, predictive theories. If we accept that anything goes somewhere in the multiverse, we give up on finding fundamental laws that uniquely determine reality. George Ellis, a renowned cosmologist, argues the multiverse is philosophy, not physics. We can never observe other universes directly. We can't communicate with them. We can't test their existence experimentally. At best, we can find indirect hints, but those could always have alternative explanations. Even worse, critics argue the multiverse is a cop-out. Can't explain the fine-tuning. Multiverse. Can't predict string theory's parameters? Multiverse. It's become a catch-all excuse that stops us from seeking deeper understanding. As physicist Paul Davies puts it, invoking an infinity of unseen universes to explain the one we do see is like using a sledgehammer to crack a nut. Living in the multiverse. If the multiverse is real, what does it mean for us, for meaning, for free will? The implications are profound and unsettling. In the quantum multiverse, every decision you make splits reality. There's a universe where you chose a different career, married a different person, or never existed because your parents never met. Every tragedy that could have been avoided was avoided somewhere. Every happiness that slipped away was caught elsewhere. This raises deep philosophical questions. Are all these versions equally you? When you make a decision, are you choosing a path or just discovering which branch you're on? If every possible outcome happens, does anything really matter? Max Tegmark, MIT physicist and multiverse advocate, suggests we should think like we're choosing which universe to inhabit, even if all possibilities play out somewhere. Your decisions determine which version of you you'll be. The one who studied hard or slacked off, who took risks or played it safe. The multiverse might also reshape how we think about probability and prediction. If everything happens somewhere, probability isn't about what will happen, but about how many universes have each outcome. When quantum mechanics says there's a 30% chance of an outcome, it might mean that outcome happens in 30% of universes. Some philosophers argue the multiverse could be comforting. Somewhere, every tragedy is averted, every wrong is made right. Others find it disturbing. If everything happens, nothing is special. Your achievements, your love, your very existence, it's all inevitable somewhere. The mundane in its cosmic certainty. The future of multiverse science. Despite the controversy, multiverse research is advancing. New technologies might finally provide evidence or refutation. The next generation of cosmic microwave background experiments 
like the Simons Observatory in Chile, will map the Big Bang's afterglow with unprecedented precision. If bubble universe collisions happened, these instruments might finally detect their signatures. Particle accelerators are probing higher energies, potentially accessing physics beyond the standard model. If extra dimensions exist, the Large Hadron Collider's successor might create microscopic black holes or detect particles, escaping into hidden dimensions, smoking, guns for string theory's landscape. Quantum computers are approaching the scale where they might demonstrate parallel processing across multiple universes. David Deutsch, a quantum computing pioneer, argues that quantum computers work by harnessing calculations done by their counterparts in parallel universes. If quantum computers achieve certain benchmarks, it might be evidence that parallel universes are doing the heavy lifting. Advanced AI might help too. Machine learning algorithms are finding patterns in cosmological data that humans miss. They might detect subtle multiverse signatures hidden in the cosmic noise, or find unexpected connections between seemingly unrelated phenomena that point to physics beyond our single universe. Conclusion, the ultimate question. The multiverse forces us to confront the biggest questions imaginable. Is our universe all there is, or are we one note in an infinite cosmic symphony? Are we alone in a single cosmos, or do infinite versions of ourselves exist across parallel realities? Is reality fundamentally knowable, or are we forever limited to our tiny corner of an incomprehensibly vast existence? Perhaps the most profound aspect of the multiverse debate isn't whether it's true, but what it reveals about science itself. We've reached a point where our theories predict realms we might never observe, where mathematics suggests realities beyond verification. We're pushing against the very boundaries of what science can tell us about existence. Whether the multiverse exists or not, the fact that we can conceive of it, model it, debate it, that's extraordinary. A species that evolved on one planet, in one solar system, in one galaxy, has developed ideas that encompass infinite realities. We've gone from wondering if Earth is the center of the universe to questioning if our universe itself is just one among countless others. As you go about your day after watching this video, consider this. If the multiverse is real, every choice you make creates worlds. Every kindness ripples across realities. Every moment branches into infinite possibilities. You're not just living one life. You're navigating an infinite tree of existence, choosing with each decision which branch of infinity you'll experience. What do you think? Is the multiverse real science or elaborate fiction? Does it matter if we can never prove it? And if infinite versions of you exist, what does that mean for the choices you make today? Share your thoughts in the comments below, in this universe at least. And remember, whether we live in one universe or infinite ones, the mystery and wonder of existence remains just as profound.